In this example, we're going to see Dask work with XGBoost. What we're going to do is we're going to load up the airline's data set onto 10 machines, each with eight cores. These are M4 double extra larges. We're going to use Dask data frame to load data and then to sort of pre-process it. Then we're, Dask is going to set up XGBoost, and it's going to hand data over to XGBoost in order to do uh, the training. Uh, so this is a case of using two distributed systems side by side. So to start off, we're going to start loading our data. Uh, here I'm using standard Dask data frame uh, utilities, which look just like pandas. You'll notice read CSV is pulling in all of the airline data in the year 2000s up. Um, and we're uh, sampling down something a little bit, a little bit of the data. We actually can't do the training uh, in RAM with a small of a cluster. Uh, we're doing some sort of basic pre-processing. We're creating a new column, which is uh, convenient if something is delayed. Uh, and then we are also clipping off and removing some other columns. Uh, so I'll run fairly quickly, and our data set is uh, here. So you can see there's things like the, the day of the week, the month, the year, the carrier, the origin destination airports, and the time traveled. And what we're going to try to predict is uh, whether or not that flight was delayed. So you see that these two flights here into uh, Chicago and MCI, uh, those two were delayed and others weren't. So we're trying to learn that. Before we can do um, training on this, on this data, we need to do a couple of things first. We need to convert these uh, text columns into categoricals and then turn them into uh, dummy columns, so into um, many, many indicator columns. Uh, DAS data frame, just like pandas, can do this uh, just fine on its own. So you're seeing that run on the side. What it's going to do is actually going to create many, many columns, uh, and each of those columns are now whether or not uh, we're flying into a particular airport or out of an airport. So now rather than having you know seven columns over here, we now have 700 columns. Uh, so this expands our data a little bit. Um, we're now up to you know 13 gigs, not that big. Again, remember we, we downsampled by around 30%, um, but still a bit, a bit sparse. So now we're going to take that data set and we're going to split it into training data and testing data using the random split method. Uh, we're choosing 90% uh, of data to be in training and 10% in test. Uh, we're using the same random state here to make sure that uh, we're, we're splitting these two data sets in the same way. Uh, and then here's the interesting part. So we're going to um, split that data, and then we're going to just hand that data off to XGBoost. So you'll notice here is on the left, uh, there's sort of 10 tasks running uh, that, from Dask's perspective, are just taking a long time. But actually what that's done is that's set up XGBoost for us uh, in the background. And so even though we're not seeing anything happening here in Dask, we can go and we can look at uh, what's happening on one of those workers. See that one of those workers is doing, you know, 100% CPU use, you know, 200% CPU use. It's loaded in, you know, up to around 14 gigs of memory. Uh, this is this is just XGBoost going on. So Dask is another worker. Uh, so Dask has just uh, handed off control to XGBoost. It's dumped all of these sort of pandas data frames into XGBoost D matrix objects, and XGBoost is doing its thing. Uh, I'm going to sort of pause the video for a bit. It's going to take a little while. Uh, we'll jump back in mid-training, and then we'll come back uh, when it's finished. So it's been around a minute, and you can see that CPU usage is higher, and also there's uh, been a lot more communication in between different worker nodes. Uh, note this is not at all Dask communication. So recall Dask is, from Dask's perspective, we're just waiting on these 10 tasks. Uh, but on the workers, you're seeing XGBoost, is now communicating uh, using its own network, its own distributed network, between different workers. And it's you know going to keep doing that. Again, here's another worker doing the exact same thing. So again, this is a case where uh, Dask has set up XGBoost, and it's given it data, but it just lets XGBoost do its own thing. Dask is not intruding here where it doesn't need to. OK, so everything's finished. And we can go over here to the Dask side and see that, indeed, our 10 tasks ran. They took, you know, something like six minutes to run. And what that returned is actually just a normal XGBoost uh, booster object. So there's no sort of special Dask XGBoost object. We're just returning back normal XGBoost objects. Um, and we can go ahead and we can use that thing locally. So taking a little bit of our test data as a pandas data frame, and we can run the XGBoost object locally here. Uh, or if we want to, we can uh, use the Dask XGBoost predict method uh, function um, against the uh, test data that we created before. Um, so this again is going to just move that model out to our cluster, 
um, and then call various predictions on it. Um, so you have it over here. And what we have back then is then just a normal task array, uh, but this task array now has uh, all of those various uh, scores. So uh, we can score how well we did um, using sort of standard scikit-learn methods uh, or, or plot the ROC curve. Um, I'm not, this doesn't seem necessarily particularly good, but uh, the point here is that we created an XG boost model uh, and did pre-processing with that data frame, handed off to XG boost, which is its own commute computations, uh, and then got the result back as again a DAS data frame. So we sort of went between these different worlds relatively smoothly. Okay, that's it.